There's some dunks down there, Courtney. Yeah, 25. Yeah, we know we can get about 60 or 70. And you know what's good about these? Is they're actually a bigger size. 10. Women's 10. Mm. I think we get them. Yeah. You always see these in the thrift. I know. But, you know, 25's a lot, but yeah. we can go high on that. We could probably go 100. Let me check this out. 13. 13, but it's season one to four. It's not really worth it, is it? Not for 13. No. We do have this, though. One, two, three. Surely there's some more. This rules of engagement. There's five seasons, but that one's season seven. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so maybe there's some more, <coughs> some more hiding. Oh, you got one? Oh yeah, nice. This is actually quite good because it's season, oh, six six. So it's season five. Season five, yeah. There may be some of this show too. Dawson's Creek. How much is that? Wow. Don't get that. This may be worth it because it's season seven, eight, nine, and ten. It's only two dollars, and they're brand new and sealed. So I think we'll definitely do this one, Courtney. Oh, this could be good. So if you found this TV show in multiple seasons, it'd be worth a lot of money. But I think we've only got one. I actually think even though it's a season six only, I think we'll actually go ahead and grab that. Big TV show. Outback Truckers. Just spot these. Season three and four of Alf. I've never seen that on DVD. We've got Alf. Enough eight dollars, but that could be worth checking out. Nice, Courtney. That's awesome. All right, thrift store number four this morning. We have a Vinnie's. Let's see what Vinnie's have got for us today. I'm feeling good about today because we had a great start. Two donuts in the last two uh, stores, but I feel like lucky number four will pull us through with some good items. So let's hope that can play out. We just found this here for ten dollars. Um, now it's quite good because it's a seventy years Parramatta Eels jersey, um, genuine, no issues with that at all. It's a size fourteen, so this is a kids or a youth size fourteen, and uh, it's in great condition. So I don't know. I think we do that. Ten bucks. Probably list it up for maybe forty. Um, in the shoes. I think I'm going to go ahead and just take these for $2. I think they're genuine. They're a women's size 7. Um, they definitely have some wear on them, but for 2 bucks, I mean, we could list them for like 30 to $35. Um, Courtney and I are looking at these. We did some research on these. These are the Copa 19.4s. Um, it's a $15 sale price or asking price in here. They're a size 9.5, but they're only worth about 40 and that only makes you $10 in profit. So we're gonna leave that behind. But we are gonna take these though. If you give these a bit of a clean, I just love the colorway. Nike Tempo, I think we can get about 40 to 50 on them. And they're $15 as well. So I don't know, I'm umming and ahhing about which of the two shoes to take, but I think we can make double your money. I think we can make about 15 in profit on these. And I think with the color, they should be able to sell pretty quick. So those two items plus I'm gonna go with these. Even though it breaks the rule around quality, we're taking them because of the price point. They're only $2. Yeah, that's crazy. So we've got these that Courtney's looked out for $9. I think it's a vintage tag. Hard yakka. They're in pretty good condition. What do you reckon we could have got for them? Like 35.40. 35.40. They're in good condition. 
There are 92 regular. And then we're looking at these. Vulcan Vorta. Vulcan Vorta. I feel like maybe go with those ones. And then? Well, you're not liking those. I think these will have fast sales for me. I think we'll get 35. 35. Nine. 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 Go both. You're cool. Yeah. Both? Mm -hmm. Alright. And this? Yep, yeah, so we're going to go those two, that, and these. Oh, and those. And you're, what are you getting there? It's the men's shirt, but I'm going to wear open jeans. Like it. Billabong. Vintage billabong. So I've just found these, a uh, pair of Burton snowboard boots. They're only $10, which is a pretty good price. Um, just had a look, they're a size eight. And then I had a look on the inside here and you can see, it says women's progression boa. And we just had a look. They're worth about 100, 100 to 150. Well, that's an exact match. Yeah, that is. So, you know, I think we could probably go, at worst, 100, yeah. maybe 80. 80, but they're in great condition. Good size. You know, shipping, shipping's a little bit annoying, but... Still compact box. You can even put them on Marketplace. Yeah. yeah. We may actually might just check the bowers, bow up, the laces. That's a bit old school, but it's, um, it works. They've had it sort of wrong. They've tested it? Uh, yeah. Let's see. It's hard. There's a lot of things that you think, oh, it's, it's too good to chuck away. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's looking a bit dated. Yeah. Uh, I think it's an Ant 2. It's not... Look, it's... it's 20 bucks. 20? Yeah. Well, uh, if it's working, I'll, I'll take it. So that was great, guys. Um, two items, but I think there's about $300 worth of value there. Um, so the Sony, uh, we spoke about this in the last vlog, DVP NC600. Doing some comps on eBay, we can get it upwards of 200 bucks on this. And the guy was obviously testing it and he said that it worked. Um, so that gives me a lot of confidence. And then he only said $20. I know. Everything else is priced up for like 40 to 50. I know. So I was quite surprised by that. Yeah. Uh, really nice gentleman. Um, Burton shoes there as well, which we spoke about. I think we can get about, I think we might just list them up for 80. Yeah. The comps are a little bit higher, uh, but from a $10 purchase, they, they are in good condition. Maybe we go 100. Let's call it 100 Yeah. All right, so we're going to go $300 in two fines, so that's exactly how we want to play this game, higher average sale price. Yeah. Um, so that brings us up to a total of $740. Mm -hmm. We need $260 more, and we've also had a lot of sales come through, Courtney. Yeah. So while we've been out running around, a lot of sales, and we're going to take you back home later in this video, and I'm going to show you those sales as well. So it's been a pretty good day. is pretty good. No luck. Um, they literally did have a price tag on them. I think that only just come in and um, she wanted $2 a disc which adding it all up was going to be about $44. Uh, so obviously just said no. I think for eight seasons of that show, we probably could have got about $100 for it. Um, yeah, but 44 into 80 with that much volume, it was going to be a lot to ship as well. So, uh, you know, you're, not, you're only making like 10 to $15 at the end of the day. But um, there is a lifeline up here as well. We're still looking for $260 in value. So we'll keep on moving. We just found these. These are the Nike M. What are they? The Air what? Trainer. 
Air Trainer Max 94, but they're the Super Bowl edition, Bo Jackson. Um, so the colorway on these are actually really quite good. We just don't know what to do because there's no size. The tags have worn off. So literally no way of determining its size, but they're a really good shoe for $25 in pretty good nick. The only blemish on them would just be this cracking on the front. Um, outside of that, it's a great shoe with a really cool colorway that would actually generate about a hundred bucks. I don't know, how do you guys do your shoes? Can you just go ahead and do a centimeter measurement of the sole and then determine what shoe size would be based on the centimeter count? Um, here's all of our stock that we picked up just there on that little thrift trip. Um, pretty happy with this in the sense of $840 worth of value because there's not a lot of stock here. Uh, we only sourced 14 items, but uh, Courtney's gonna list all that up this afternoon before she finishes. I think the best of the day, no doubt those basketball shoes are pretty good on a random grab at 25 bucks. Uh, but we're going to make the most money on this, no yeah. doubt about it. And as you'll see in a second with these items that we've had sell, uh, there's a few of those types of items that are coming through for us in like really quick sell through rate time. Had two pretty good sales days. Um, today is around 3.82 and it's, what is it, one o'clock in the afternoon? Mm. Um, 378 yesterday as well. So our average per day is now 349. Um, so currently at 8,386 for the month. So that with five more days is about 10 and a half grand. So about 500 off the revenue at the moment. For projections. Yeah. So yeah, we're still within striking distance. We're just gonna need to find an extra $500 basically over the next five days. So yep. maybe five $450 sales days. Um, that's how we worked it out just there. Mm -hmm. We got 10,470 as our projection for the month and we won 11. Um, but we've got, we've got 12 orders. Um, as you can see there, it's been, been pretty good over the last few days. But we've got 12 orders that have come through in the last 12 or so hours. First one here is this vintage 1991 Atari Lynx uh, Turbo Sub video game. Um, we've had that for a long time actually. We've had it listed for 38 and they sent an offer through for 30 when we're out thrifting before that I accepted and they paid. So that will be going out today. We're going to put it in a box or a satchel? Um, I think a box. Yeah. You don't want to damage this box. box. Yeah. Um, and I think it is quite, you know, it's quite light and flimsy. So I think if you were to put bubble wrap in a satchel, you'd probably damage it. Mm -hmm. So I think you're right. I think we'll put Two that into box. a small box. Yeah. Yeah, 30 bucks, it's, it's well, what do they say? We're not in the storage business, we're in the sales game. Exactly. And uh, that's what you gotta do sometimes, just take an offer and I thought $30 wasn't too bad, that'll ship for $8.50. A massive thank you to a viewer of the channel by the name of Cameron, who has picked up a Brixton hat and he's also grabbed a really nice, I think this is almost a wool texture, uh, polyester, or t yeah, 10% wool um, insight hat. Now, I've got a lot of hats. Courtney and I have been sourcing these for a very, very long time. And in the last episode, we said that we we're going to be doing 50% uh, off. So buy one or buy one, get one free, basically. Um, and that's exactly what Cameron's taken advantage of. He's jumped in, he's taken this for 25 and he got this one for free. Um, so 25 bucks for two hats, buy one, get one free. We're running it for the next week, uh, at least on this channel. And um, all you need to do is hit us up on eBay. House of Mumba is the store. Uh, peruse the hats, see what you're interested in. The highest priced hat is the price that you'll pay for two hats. Uh, and all you need to do is just put a watch on the two that you want and then just shoot me a message. Uh, and that way I can send you a best offer. Uh, that'll be half price on both hats, which secures the deal for you. Um, so we'll put these together in a box for Cameron. Um, like I said, Cameron, thank you very much for your purchase. Uh, two very, very nice hats at you know, $12.50 each. Reason why we're doing all of this, if you're wondering, um, if, you, if you haven't been watching the recent videos, is we're phasing out of our hats. We've decided at the start of this week that we we're gonna phase out, and the first stage of phasing out is an Instagram or YouTube um, viewer offer. So hopefully there's some take up this week, and then we'll probably put that two for one special uh, on the actual eBay store after that for the general public. All right, the next one is this Manly Sea Eagles uh, DVD collection and these cool um, 
retro for the jersey tins. Yeah, the vintage tin, the vintage, vintage jerseys. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, bit of a slow mover though. We originally had these listed for around the forty to fifty dollar mark for the two of them, but then we reduced the price to thirty and actually accepted a $25 offer for them, just because they had been sitting around for quite a while now. Um, so they will go into a, a satchel, do you reckon? I think being a, a steel tin case. With bubble wrap, yeah. A lot of bubble wrap, I think they'll go perfectly into a small satchel. Mm -hmm. um, and we spoke about that last last episode, that we're trying to sort of go with the 25 minimum mm. sale price. Yeah. So having them listed up for 30, I, I didn't think a best offer at 25 was too bad. Very much yeah. like that um, Lynx game. Yeah. Um, you know, for $30, very similar story. Just trying to get a few things out of here. Mm -hmm. You know, 25 is the bare minimum and at least we're able to get that. All right, now every other sale that we've got to show you, which is another four, have a minimum sale price of $60 plus. So they're good ones. Mm -hmm. Good ones to have a chat about. This one was a three figure sale, hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. And it was a pair of Nike Air Force Ones, uh, which I was stoked to see come through while we're out cruising around. Look at that. That's a, yeah, just a really cool. cool, just do it logo on the front there. Mm. Uh, completely genuine, nothing fake about these. They won't hit authentication. Uh, when it comes to top end sneakers, um, you know, if these were in better condition, we'd probably go over $150. And when you go over 150 bucks, you have to go through the eBay authentication service. Um, the way that works, if you're unfamiliar, is you don't pay any additional costs to get it to your authenticators. Um, eBay just automatically defaults the, uh, the send of the shoe to the authentication center. And then there's actual just people at the authentication center that look over it and determine whether or not they actually are genuine or not. If they pass the test, then they on send uh, to the actual buyer. So the buyer may, may need to wait a few more days uh, from a postage standpoint. Um, you're not affected on post um, in the sense of delivery time and when it gets to the buyer because it does need to go through that process so they allow for a few more days. Um, but these shoes won't go through that process. Um, they sold for $100, which means they won't go through the authenticators. Um, not that I'm concerned if they did or didn't because they are genuine shoes, um, but that's just the process with higher priced shoes. So if you don't want to go through authentication, not that it really should ever matter, but uh, $150 is the bare minimum um, for that service to kick in. But uh, yeah, got these, I think they were in a private buy. Don't know how long ago, mm. but to be able to sell a pair of shoes, any pair of shoes, for $100 is very, very exciting stuff. And we'll put these into a medium satchel and it won't cost too much to ship off. Will it? Next one, another pair of shoes here. These are a Keen hiking shoe. Um, you might have seen in a few weeks ago, actually, maybe two weeks, uh, Matt brought these out in the thrift. He paid $25 for them, uh, purely on the fact that they're in such good condition. They're almost new and they have a fast sell through rate as well. So they were comping up for about 80 and I believe Matt listed them for just below 80. Yeah, we got a $65 sale price. Yeah. Um, because I, I just wanted to see them turn around fast and I knew in this condition that they would. Mm -hmm. Could have held out a little bit longer and got the full asking price of 80. Yeah. But um, to get our money back and to get a $65 sale price on these, mm -hmm. it is the condition that gets the sale quick. Now, you guys may have remembered in last episode, I said that I was getting uh, Courtney to list this one up, which we got off Selwyn on the weekend. Today's Wednesday, so this is actually sold in 24 hours from when Courtney went ahead and listed it up on Monday. Um, really quick turnaround, had this one come through late yesterday afternoon. Uh, it's just a VCR player, but it's a Panasonic NVHD620. Now, the comps on eBay for this was about $150 and we actually got $150, the full asking price, no offers. This thing just sold in wildfire time. Mm. Um, it does have its remote and it also has its manual, which is fantastic. So I'm really happy to see this device. We were only talking about finding it in the last episode. Yeah. And now we're sending it into a box and getting it out the door for $150. So I paid 20 bucks uh, for this off Selwyn. And um, as you obviously saw in the video today with what we're able to buy for $20 as well in store, um, we're gonna list that device up for 200. And based on these sorts of sales that you're starting to see come through in this relatively new category that we're trying to sell, um, we're getting some really good average sale price and we're getting a very fast sell through rate. So I'm excited about the category. Um, yes, there's a bit of testing that goes along with the process of this and there is a bit of a shipment cost, 
Um, but if you're if you're an if you're an experienced seller uh, and you've been in the game for a little bit, I think this is the sort of stuff you can get into. Um, shouldn't be too risky if you make sure you do your testing. But uh, a very very cool sale in a very quick space of time. Now, same category as we we're just talking about. Another fast turnaround. This was a few days that it had been listed to selling. Um, and Samsung Blu-ray and DVD? No, just Blu-ray player. Yeah, it's just a Blu-ray. Yeah. Um, what do we get? We got a $50 sale price for this one. 60 I think. 50 I know, you're right. 40 yeah, 50 <laughs> It was a coupon too, so it was only forty seven ninety five. Yeah, so not too crazy, but still the, the turnaround of them. Um, very, very good. Yeah, so we're going to put that into a box. I yeah. don't think it'll send for anything more than about $12. No. Yeah. Uh, it's quite small and light. Yeah, it is. Um, but again, look, guys, we've got a lot of consoles on the floor here. Uh, we have a lot of these devices that are still continually going on to sell. This is about $280 for this one here. That was the RC299 I spoke about in the last video. Um, we've got this Panasonic Blu-ray player up here. Um, that's the DMP BD45. That's got a remote and a manual. Always helps when you get remotes and manuals. Yeah. Um, you've obviously just seen that cell. You've seen the VCR cell that I just spoke of. And then there's more consoles up here as well that we're trying to sell off too. So these electronic devices, I like the category. I like the sale price that comes along with it. And as you can see from today, we're going to be trying to source a lot more of it. Okay. As you can see just there in the bottom of the screen, I have the post. Courtney has smashed the post and she's now working on those listings that we found. It's a thing with us at the moment because we don't have a real backlog of death pile. Um, you know, we basically find it and it is live within a few hours of it being sourced, uh, which definitely isn't, uh, you know, it was funny. I was at Retail Fest uh, last week uh, speaking to a bunch of other eBay sellers and one of the... Uh, one of the sellers said, geez, we, we make it hard for ourselves, don't we? And it's the thrill of the hunt. It's the thrill of going out and sourcing for stock that we enjoy the most. But uh, from a sense of efficiencies, from a business perspective, it is quite inefficient, you know, running around today, public holiday tomorrow to try and find two days worth of stock to keep us going on an algorithmic sense with eBay. You don't really want to live your life like that. As much as it is fun to go out and thrift, it's a different perspective when it's your job and it's it's your complete income. Um, you know, if you're doing it as a bit of a, a side hustle, very different. You know, you can go out as much as you want to go out. It's not ultimately the thing that pays the bills. Uh, but when you're in an environment where it does pay the bills, it doesn't become as enjoyable. It actually just heightens in stress. Uh, and like, like the... Uh, like the reseller uh, said at the conference, we just make it very hard for ourselves. So uh, definitely need to work on trying to build some more connections, I think. I think for any seller out there, you'll make life easier for yourself if you just build better connections. Um, yeah, ongoing network of people that you can communicate to and, and, and get deals done with on a regular basis is ultimately the secret to your long-term success on this platform. Um, and I think over the time of doing this for the last few years, I probably relied on the fact that it was just so plentiful in these stores that I didn't feel the need that I had to go out and you know, make as many connections as I probably should have. Um, it's something that I'm only starting to focus on a little bit more now. And you know, my background is in business. Um, I've worked in sales roles, business development roles in you know, the sporting industry in the past and I fully know that business network and connections uh, is ultimately the way that business gets done um, you know, in its best way so I haven't been doing that uh, and I'm going to start to do that so that's sort of just sort of what's going on in my head around this whole eBay thing I need to put some better processes in place where you know I am very anti-death pile when you talk around it from a, a casual you know, if you're not doing this as a full-time business, I don't think you should have a death pile. Um, you should just find it and list it and then go again, reinvest the money that you make off the sales and then just build it up. That would be the way that I would do it if I was working a nine to five job. If you guys are interested in my thoughts on how I would handle eBay working a nine to five, um, which I think would make for a pretty interesting video, uh, let me know in the comments because I am tempted to put some notes together and make a video around that because I know a lot of you are actually more so in that position. Uh, you're not in the position of working 
nine to five on an eBay business. You are doing something else and you are trying to work outside the hours of mainstream work to make a few extra dollars. And I think I would approach eBay very differently uh, if I was in that position myself. Not that I ever have been, um, but I feel like I've got some thoughts that could probably help you guys a lot. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you'd like that video to be made. Um, very happy though, while we were out running around to see as many sales come through as it did. Um, to see the new category that we're trying to sell is obviously pretty exciting um, because it is a higher average sale price for us and that will ultimately mean we'll make a little bit more money in profit. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, what was that? What was that? There was another thing. Um, the other thing is we had a good little pickup there while Courtney was doing the post. Uh, I ran out and I had a look at some thrift stores and I actually, I didn't film it, I was actually in a cash converters. Um, I, I picked up some guitars um, from this cash converters a few weeks ago and I actually flipped them for some really good money, about a hundred odd dollars, and I was buying them for $25 in store. Funnily enough, I went back there and the two other guitars that I left behind a few weeks ago uh, were still in store. So, you know, with the success of having seen them sell previously for me, I thought, well, why not just grab the other two? Uh, and I did have a bit of a look at the second guitar, um, which I ended up leaving behind just because there was a bit of corrosion in the battery case, which is one of the fundamental things you've got to check when you're buying those sorts of things. Any, any form of electronic, always check the battery case for corrosion. Uh, not that that can't actually be fixed, don't get me wrong, I understand that you could put some time into cleaning that up, um, and, and it can still work. Um, but I just erred on the side of caution, didn't want the hassle of it, just saw a nasty looking corrosion in the case and I thought, look, that'll do me. And I left it back on the shelf. However, um, there was one that was in really good condition. It had a lot of stickers on it. I don't like it when the guitar hero guitars have stickers. Uh, it just makes it look a bit tacky when it comes to taking your photos um, for presentation of your listing. Uh, however, I went ahead and I struck up a deal and I got it for, I got $29 down to $25. Uh, you can freely negotiate, obviously, in cash converters. And uh, yeah, 25 was completely fine in their eyes, as it was for myself. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and list that up for $75. Uh, where, well, I'm gonna get Courtney to do that now. 75 bucks, I told her. Um, so hopefully that'll go on to do a pretty quick sell-through rate like the other ones that were able to sell for us. Uh, the other ones as well, you wouldn't believe it. I've actually delved back into the Funko Pop game, um, just temporarily because they had a 50% off special running. Couldn't help myself. We needed an extra 140 or 160 dollars to hit the thousand for the for the day, um, and it was the Funko Pop listings that are actually going to get us through tomorrow's worth of listings. Uh, I found three Funkos of the office uh, that I think I can do as a bundle for 60 dollars. Um, I only paid 13 dollars for the three pops, so 13 into 60. That's going to be a fantastic listing, um, and the office I think should sell well based on what I believe is still an American market. I still think there's an American market for the Funko Pops. Um, so I'm gonna to continue to sort of pander to the Americans and uh, list my items up on the anticipation that I will send it over there. Uh, because I think it has died somewhat here in Australia, hence why places like Cash Converters are trying to sell them all off at 50%. But uh, I took advantage of that and uh, I bought six Funko Pops. Uh, three were the office, as I touched on, and then three of them were between $30 to $50 each, and I got them for $6. So I was paying $6 each, and they were selling between $30 and $50. There was a HR Puff and stuff, some other one that I can't remember. Actually, the other two I can't remember. But yeah, $30 to $50 on comps in America uh, was the reason why I went ahead and, uh, and grabbed those as well. So, you know, We'll see how it goes. It gets us our listings for the day. Thousand dollars found today, which I thought was brilliant. Uh, I've paid about two hundred bucks, so two hundred into a thousand. Um, that's typically the way I like to go about my business. And uh, here we are at the um, at the post office to drop off another day's worth of sales. And it is only three fifty p.m. We started after the gym today at uh, ten. We know nine. So nine to four, so that's been seven hours and we've been able to achieve all of that. Just another day in the life of a full-time eBay seller. It is a little bit hectic at times, a little bit inefficient at times. There are processes that we could change to make our lives a little bit easier, but I absolutely love doing what I do. And uh, I really do enjoy turning the camera on and talking to you guys as well. Hopefully these longer format videos 
are enjoyable for you guys. Uh, I enjoy making them because there is a little less time in the edit. Uh, I can just sort of let things fly, let the camera roll as I'm doing here and just kind of have a bit of a chat with you guys. Um, as I'm having a chat, I do want to touch on the last video. Thank you very much for all of your food suggestions. Uh, I mentioned that I didn't have a sense of smell and I do a Monday night dinner with my family each and every Monday night. And uh, I did ask for some suggestions and boy, did they come in. Um, so I'm actually gonna work on a few of those suggestions and actually do that next month. I only have to do it once every four weeks. Um, so I'm gonna run one of the plays that you guys said that I should do, maybe tacos. I felt like that was a good suggestion. Um, but there are a couple of other good ones that I might try out as well over the next few months. So. Uh, thank you very much for that and thank you very much for tuning in. If you are here at this part of the video and you are yet to subscribe to the channel, my goodness, it is absolutely time to do so. So go ahead, hit that button. Uh, welcome and uh, to everyone else that's been here for a while and subscribed for a while. Truly guys, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, there is no plans on stopping. It is full steam ahead. I'm trying to grow this YouTube channel as much as I can and try and hit 130 to 150,000 of revenue on eBay this year. Uh, would be a very, very cool 2024. So uh, you are a part of it and I thank you for it. And uh, I think I've rambled on for way too long. So here's a video uh, right here of a day that I spent very similar to this, running around, buying some stuff, and then obviously trying to sell it for a profit. We'll see you soon.